Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. Welcome to How We Grow, uh, the vacation rental show. And today I am thrilled, guys, with the guests that we have. The amount of experience, the amount of information you're going to get today. Alex has got so much experience here. She is the chief marketing officer at Casago right now. And it is one of the largest professionally managed vacation rentals in the U.S. Um, And she's also on the board of the Myrtle Beach Chamber of Commerce. That's like since 2013, Alex. You've been doing that a long time. And now I think you're the chair. Actually, I just finished my chairmanship, Good. but I am the past chair this year. And actually today, uh, in about two hours, I go to our past chairs luncheon that we have uh, twice a year. So get to go there and learn from all the amazing people that have been part of the organization for you know, the last 30 years is pretty cool. I love Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. Now, let me just say that's that's a big deal because the comp- competition there is huge and it's been there for a long time. They're very Um, they're very experienced. They've been doing it for a long time. So the fact that you chaired that board just says enormous amounts about your experience there. You are also the chief marketing officer at Honda World Resort and grew that into one of the most recognized brands in short-term rentals, like huge. Um, I mean, you're degreed, you do all kinds of things. You also are the co-host of Alex and Annie, which is literally one of the top 10 podcasts, period. (laughs) Um, one of my favorite podcasts as well. And, um, I want to talk to you a little bit today about, we're going to talk about branding because she knows so much about marketing guys. I really want her to address, um, things about marketing. So direct bookings, uh, technology stack decisions. And, uh, we also want to talk a little bit about market differences, because I think that's really important because we have a broad audience here. And I want to say, Alex, yesterday, I'm talking to um, someone who is not a guest on a show, but they're like this, they're uh, someone in business. And they said to me, I was thinking, I was considering joining Casago. And I said, you should do that. You should talk to somebody about that. It's a really good decision. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'd love to talk to them. (laughs) So let me ask you this. What is the best piece of advice that you would give? to a property manager, I'm actually going to put it on the East Coast. We're going to talk East Coast because I know marketing is different. Um, someone on the East Coast uh, that's just starting out in, vaca- in vacation rental management and they want to grow. There's a lot to, there's a lot to, be, uh, to start with, really. But I think you, know, you really have to look at what your goal is for the business. If you're c- completely brand new and maybe you just have an Airbnb or a Verbo and you own one or you're managing one for somebody, you really have to think about what your your goal is uh, f- for this job and for this career. And if you want to be uh, an entity that manages for a lot of properties, or if you want to stay boutique, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But I think the decisions that people make in the early years really end up guiding what will happen uh, later on. I mean, those formative years are really important. And you know, choosing the right way that you're going to structure your company from who you're going to hire, what 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 roles you're going to need to hire for, and maybe you can't necessarily hire a GM and a marketing person right away. But you know, thinking down the line and doing your research up front, that will kind of get your mind in the right direction of of what decisions you're going to need to make as they come to you. But you know, really looking at the tech is super important too. We just got back from VRMA Spring Forum in Kansas City, and I've never seen so many vendors in in the vendor hall. Now there are so many different tools and amazing technology that's out there that never existed back you know when I first started in this industry there really there weren't a whole lot of choices on things that you could do and I think because of that we just we all basically did the basics and then yeah. have really just evolved over the years but you know choosing the right tech choosing the right information that you're listening to that you're the people you're surrounding yourself with those are kind of the those are the kind of the bases that you have to cover in the early days so let me ask you this, um, direct booking versus, um, versus third party OTAs. Um, obviously we need a good mix between them, but there are some companies, especially at the beginning that they have started their whole business around Airbnb, VRBO, um, 
and and all the different uh, OTAs out there, what what tips can you give them for transitioning to direct marketing, getting some direct bookings in there so they own their guests? Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of it comes down to guest experience and creating a brand. And really all these things go hand in hand, or at least they are more like concentric circles, I guess you could say, that they really overlap. So if a guest stays with you on Verbo or Airbnb, you want to make sure that the next time they come back, if you are in a market that you would get a repeat visitor, that they book directly with you. And I think that comes down to right from the beginning, the communication that you set forth. So what do your confirmation emails look like? What are the pre-arrival messages that you're sending? Do they look, are they branded? I know with Airbnb, obviously you've got some restrictions on what you can actually send, but if you do, do your best to make sure that you get those people's emails address, email addresses and you get them into your system. So you can start sending your cadence of um, just building that experience. And it, 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 the word host is kind of a newer thing. We didn't used to call ourselves hosts. That's an Airbnb term, but at the end of the day, that is what we are. So whether it's an Airbnb booking or a direct booking, you are a host to them and you know, building that relationship and that trust um, is super important. And I think, you know, we can get further into this, but really, you know, the, the relationship you build with those guests, the more that you allow them to speak on behalf of your brand and go back to their family and friends and share that they just had this amazing experience in the Outer Banks or Myrtle Beach or wherever it was. Um, the easier you make it for them to share that experience, the faster you're going to grow. So through their recommendations, their reviews, their user-generated content, photos, that's that's a, a quick hack to make sure that you're really getting all that you can from the guests that you're getting from these OTAs. All right. So I'm going to write this down because I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, we're going to talk, and this this is for all areas, all markets, no matter where you are in the world. If you are in vacation rentals, let's talk about user generated content. I think that's a discussion that we have too little of. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember back years ago, we started a photo contest and then we would do, then we, then we graduated to doing, uh, we have a tool that does online reviews that automatically goes and posts to your Google local page. Uh, What, what do they need to think about now today that was then for user generated content, what kind of content would you suggest and how would you suggest they go about marketing? I think it's twofold, but it can be done kind of at this in the same way. So you want to be getting those reviews, whether they're reviews on your listings on Verbo Airbnb, because that's going to make you obviously get more bookings there. And that's more people that when they book with you directly that you can get into your own direct funnel. Um, but then you also want to get them to share photos and quotes from their stay. I mean, really at, you know, at the end of the day, if you're going to an area that you don't know, you're likely going to ask somebody that you know who either has been there or lives there for their recommendations. And, you know, TripAdvisor is great and reading reviews on Airbnb is great, but at the same time, you also, you're going to trust people that you know and their best judgment. So um, the ability to give them to submit photos um, at, at Condo World, we used a, a program called flip Two that was pretty instrumental in our growth. And, uh, works really well to curate uh, photos and reviews from your guests and then the ability to then repurpose that. But it's, you know, all of this is, if you're just starting, this is all a lot, right? And I think you have to look at it as it's really a flywheel and there's core components of what needs to be done there from, you know, the branding, the user-generated content, email marketing, SEO, PPC. I mean, it's it's a lot, right? And I don't think you can tackle all of it at once, but I think if you make a goal to, to look at one part first, um, and if it's user-generated content, that's not a bad one to look at. I think that could be a very good one to look at as you're getting started. So best bang for your buck for user-generated content. I want you to realize what Alex just said is, guys, there are platforms out there. There are platforms that are created to, to um, garner, gather that information uh, from the guest, and there are platforms that do that automatically. If you want to know about those types of things, you are welcome to contact uh, Alex. I'm sure she has great recommendations. You're welcome to contact me. I have some recommendations for that. It's a pro- it's a passion of mine. Direct booking is a real passion of mine. Um, I've been in the industry since uh, right before VRBO got involved. And when they got involved, we recognized that there was going to be a great need in a few years for direct marketing. 
uh, because when you have that bulk of information in one platform, they can own the search engines. So you've got to really watch your SERPs there. Um, What, uh, so we're talking pictures and we're talking reviews. What are your favorite tools for that? I'm just going to ask you. So you, I mean, I, I have no, I just want them to know where can they start? They can contact you. Do you mind? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so certainly reach out to me. I know, I mean, in Myrtle Beach Market, like I, I said, we used a company called Flip2. That that was how we were able to generate the user-generated content. But there's there's several others out there, and it just kind of depends on again what the your your goals are for it. But um, I mean, anything that allows your guests to be able to sh- to share their story, share their pictures, but then also be able to get that out into their audiences. And you know, I think the main thing that we all need to be thinking about too is. How do we own more of our own audiences? When you mentioned that you got in right before Verbo became a big thing and, and how, you know, I think everybody back then, I, I remember those days, I remember being at Condo World and having those conversations that the owner of our company said, you know, we we really, he was like, you know, he saw the future very, very far in advance. He was like, this is going to change how our business is going to look in 10 years and 15 years. And it absolutely did. But, you know, we are now beholden to some of these OTAs and some of these different channels because I mean, they, they, they own the audience and we all need to be focused on no matter what tool it is that you use, but building our own audiences, whether that's your email list or your social media pages, even social media pages is also even hard really, because you actually don't own those, but email list is probably the most important. Um, But being able to loop in ways to get people to want to participate and share their photos and be part of your, you know, engage with your email campaigns. Um, it's it's hard to pinpoint a direct or, or easy to <laughs> say strategy on that because it really is. It's so multi-level. But I think, you know, starting from that vantage point of, you know, that's the goal, owning your own media, owning your own audiences, becoming your own, um, your own voice within the people that you're trying to reach. Would you suggest that they search uh, they search for their properties the same way a a user would search for them and look to see where those reviews are maybe and think about how to get content into that. Yeah, yeah, I think for, that's that's a good way to do it. Um, and they're just know, growing. Yeah, and that's an old yeah. school. That is an old school method. But if I was yeah. growing, you know, I'd want to yeah. know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're if you're in a market and you know, you, I mean, I think just overall, just diversifying where you put your properties is also a good strategy. You have to make sure you have the tech that can support that. But um, I mean, you want to be on as many Google listings as possible. So whether you it's go. your company or the yeah. individual home, I mean, the more eyeballs you have on a property, the more chances you're going to have to get it booked. So um, yeah, I, and that's just go to Google and search for what people are actually finding, how they're finding you how they're finding that property. I know, you know, this doesn't, this is one of those things that I don't think works in all markets, but it did certainly here in the Myrtle beach area that we always put the name of the property in the, in the listing title and yeah. because people would go back and they would search. So if we had Ashworth 605, we would put the name of the, the property and then a description that said it was oceanfront, three bedroom, beautiful, you know, some other adjectives there. But when they went and searched for it, they would find it on our site and see that it was a few hundred dollars less in a lot of cases because you don't have the booking fees. So that's a really good strategy. But I I know in some markets that doesn't that doesn't necessarily work quite as well. Um, and like you mentioned in the early part, it is really, really interesting having been in this industry for so long to see some of these things that do and don't work, um, maybe not don't work, but just work differently you know, in like a Phoenix or a Scottsdale, you know, some of these areas that have just blown up in supply that we've always had a, a ton of supply on the East coast beach destinations. That's nothing new for us. There's more, but it's not new, but some of these markets, this is, it's a whole new ball game. And when the competition really, all you can do is Verbo and Airbnb have just dominated those markets it's, mm-hmm. You really have to stand out on those channels specifically. So, This episode of How We Grow is brought to you by Blue Tent. Blue Tent is proud to offer digital marketing solutions for vacation rental professionals. Expand your visibility to new travelers and book more guests with a team of Blue Tent. Featuring direct booking sites, email marketing, digital marketing, channel management, and more. Discover what Blue Tent can do for your short-term rentals at bluetent.com. Um, I was thinking, even in Europe recently, uh, 
I found a place I really liked. My husband works there. So I travel a lot in Europe and uh, I found the name of the place I really liked. And I literally Googled that name. And it's just like you said, they came back on the platforms and I was really surprised. And I was able to see reviews on multiple platforms. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, so that's about direct booking. Is there anything else you want to share? Anything else about direct booking that you think that um, has really helped uh, growth? I mean, I think it's just the further further or going a little bit further on it, just the conversation that you have after the stay is just as important as the conversation you have before the stay. So, I mean, mapping out those journeys from the pre-arrival to post-arrival and then the cadence that you want to stay in touch with those people throughout the year. So if this is a destination that it's highly likely they could want to come back and stay with you again, you know, what are those emails that you're going to send out later on? Is it their booking anniversary email? Um, is it a campaign? Are you going to do it more seasonal based or uh, holiday based. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can build your email marketing strategy, but I would certainly, if you're trying to get direct bookings, you definitely want to make sure you have a system and tools that are going to be able to support that. Let's talk about branding. I know that's one of your passions. What strategies do you think that companies should use um, the most important elements for successful branding in your vacation rental? I, you know, I think it kind of goes back to this, to my first point too, that I think it really comes down to what are the goals for what you're trying to achieve and really understanding, I mean, what is your brand? What is going to be your differentiate differentiation from the competition? So and, know your brand first. Yeah. And, and even if, <laughs> if you haven't, if you haven't, just, if you haven't established it yet, think about what it is that you want to be known for. I mean, our, our, are you trying to be known as the most luxurious option? Are you the most you know affordable option? Are is service the most important to you? Is you know having that really boutique style uh, relationship and you know being able to bring things to the unit and greet the guests? I mean, you really have to think about like the experience that you're trying to create, and then the brand should roll around that. And you know, in, in both roles that I was in, both at, at Condo World and at Costco, I mean, our you know these are brands that were built to be enterprise level brands. And we have a lot of amazing touches that we do that still allow our guests to feel like it is that one-to-one -one relationship with the company. But, you know, if you're trying to build a, a large property management business, you know, one thing, just even going back to the name, this always amazes me, but if you are trying to build a property management business and you want to be in multiple markets, don't call yourself coastal vacations, X, Y, Z, right? <laughs> and I, I've, I've seen that happen in so many cases that people realize once they, you know, they, they get some taste of success and they want to go buy another company or they want to open a company in another area. And then they realize, well, that doesn't work. And in a lot of cases, even using names doesn't work. We see that a lot, that if it's um, Husner vacation rentals, that might mean something in, in Myrtle beach, but that doesn't mean mm -hmm. anything if I want to go into the mountains. So I've been thinking about the name and thinking about something that is going to differentiate yourself and doesn't just sound the same. There's, there's a lot of names in our industry. I feel like that are just variations of each other and it's really easy to confuse them. Asago is a household name in vacation rentals. Um, tell me a little bit about the franchise model and how it works so people understand what, what you're doing there. Yes, and I love that you said we're a, we're a household name. <laughs> I think we're- You are. We're, we're certainly, we're, we're working towards that. And um, I think we're making great, great progress. But so basically, I mean, Costco is a property management business for 22 years, um, but in the last three years has de developed a franchise model that basically has taken all the things that we have found are the most successful parts of our business and mm. wrapped them together in a way that other vacation rental companies that either existing or new can utilize those tools to grow um, and be supported by a larger organization. So I mean, franchise is nothing new in business. I mean, restaurants, uh, you know, stores, I mean, like every industry has franchise, but it's a smaller subset within the vacation rental industry. But you know, hotels obviously is huge, but it uh, it makes sense because right now what's happening in our industry is these smaller companies, whether again they're newer or they've been around for a long time, they're having a really hard time being able to compete. You know, with, mm -hmm. with different crosses of the world or even just yeah. the larger companies in their market. And what we've done is we've put together you know the property management system, the revenue management, the homeowner marketing, the guest marketing. 
um, the economies of scale of being able to leverage a company that has 4,000 properties when you're making deals. And I mean, that's, that's a, there's a huge operational efficiency benefit there. Um, and then just having the support. A lot of companies that I talk to, they say, I feel like I was out on an island by myself. Like I didn't have anyone to talk to or I didn't have anybody <laughs> to ask questions to. And you know, you go to the vendor hall, like I mentioned earlier at VRMA, and there's so many choices of what is the best thing to do for this or that. And I think people are hungry for that information and support. And that's really, you know, what yeah. our sweet spot is, is, is building that community that supports them on a lot of different levels. I want to tell you something else. You guys, Casago has an all-star cast as far as the people running it. The people running running it are, are some of the best in the industry. And that includes you, Alex. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really serious when I'm at the end, we're going to give information so people can contact you. (laughs) If you are stuck in marketing, um, if you're stuck and you don't know what to do, this is, uh, one of the best experts in the whole industry for giving you advice. And, and I know she has such a, such a heart, you have a heart for travel too. (laughs) I tell you, I read something about you the other day. I was like, what? You traveled around the world for three years. Is that you? No, that was not me. <laughs> now that's somebody. No. Somebody told me they were like Alex travels all over the world, and someone said that you had traveled. Okay, so that's what, me... they, they probably said because I mean everybody see I've been traveling a lot lately, and they probably were saying you know Alex travels all over the world, but like <laughs> not literally, that's, but it does it does oh, feel like that. Not, it does not feel literally like around that. the world. <laughs> it's like, wow, well, I'll have to ask her about that because that was like the, so the most fun fact I'd ever seen. It was like, that's a long time. Traveling around the world three times would take yeah. a real mm-hmm. long time. Yeah, no, that's- I'm like, that's, yeah. somebody started a rumor on you. So there you yeah. are. They're, they're the kind of rumors that get started on Alex. That's, that's your so travel. <laughs> Tell me this, if you could go back uh, to yourself 20 years ago, what would you say to yourself? Best advice- Oh boy, 20 years ago, let's see. So I w- would have been 17. So just graduated, well, about to go to high school. I would say, uh, have faith in your future because mm-hmm. it's all going to work out <laughs> and you can do anything that you want to do and don't let your past be determine your future. I, I did okay in high school. I went to a really, really tough private high school And a lot of my friends went to Ivy Leagues. I didn't, I went to a good school. I went to Radford, but I didn't. You went to to Radford. That is a darn good school. I have family that, that loved, that went there and loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great school, but I, um, Mm -hmm. I always felt like, you know, and looking back, it was not necessary, but you know, when you're, when you compare yourself to other people, you feel like you're, you're less than, and and I remember just feeling like, Oh, "Oh, you know, I'll, I'll have a good career. I'm going to a good school, but just not thinking that I would, you know, amount to, you know, something that my friends in high school did. And really, I think it, it, that it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's your life is about what you create, the relationships you build, the opportunities you make for yourself, your mindset creates your ability to make any of these opportunities come to fruition. Um, and, you know, you just, you have to trust your gut. You have to watch for the signs. You have to believe that, you know, you have to have that faith that things are going to work out and that it's actually going to be much better than you actually thought it would be. <laughs> I ask, oh, I agree 100% with you. And that's actually really good advice. That's really good advice. You should believe in yourself. You know, their life is going to, and you said the same thing other guests have said. I just want to say that it's going to work out. No matter what it looks like, it's yeah. going to work out. Exactly. It yeah. will. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always ask our guests to tell me a favorite owner story and a favorite guest story. Uh, Ooh, do you okay. have, and I, I should have asked you that before we even started. Um, but do you have an owner story, your favorite owner and your favorite guest? Let's see. So actually I have a, I have a good story. That's more of a funny story, but it kind of combines owners and guests <laughs> and, cool. and uh, shows you know, the, the importance of the details in this business. So this is going back probably, I'd say 10 years ago that I just started at, at Condo World and um, we had this four bedroom property that slept 16 people and it had just recently come onto our, our rental program and something happened with the company that that had lost the unit that they 
didn't, they still left it in their system. I think a lot of companies do this for tax purposes that they still leave it active within their property management system, but they might have it. So it's not showing on the website. Well, the guests of this property were never informed that it had changed to a different management company. So this is probably like 4th of July, I think. I mean, it was a super busy Saturday and the guests go to the old rental company and they go to check in and somebody just saw it in the in the list of inventory and gave them keys and they were off on their way. Meanwhile, we have that property on our rental program. <laughs> you can probably see where this is going. And mm -hmm. uh, our guests arrive at, at Condor World to check in that day and we give them the keys to go check in. And I guess th there's, so there's two families of about 16 people in each and they all arrived at different times. And so they, some of them got there earlier and uh, you could tell there was stuff in the unit and then they were down at the beach and then some of the other family got there, but there was no, never anybody in the condo at first together. So they all just thought it was the other family members thing. So the two families are now down on the beach and not, uh, not knowing what's about to happen. And slowly they all start making their way back up to the condo later in the afternoon and ever it was just chaos. I mean, people are yelling and screaming, who are you? What are you doing in my condo? <laughs> and it's just awful. And so, you know, they, they all come, I think they went, came back to our office. They all, all, both families came to our office and now, you know, they're so confused. They don't know if it's our fault, if it's the other company's fault and oh it gosh. was the other company's fault, but um, <laughs> it, was, it doesn't matter. You it, have to handle the problem. Was, right. We still had to handle it. And I think it ended up that it, you know, those are chaotic situations and there are so many things similar in nature that happen like that in this business that you can't, oh, you can't leave me. Board. You can't yeah. leave me. What happened? Yeah. Who, and, who and got, then, who found the other condo? It's 4th of July. You're Myrtle beach. There's right. nobody. There's yeah. nowhere. Yeah. And I, I, I think we ended up, we were able to get like two condos for one of the families, but from different rental companies that that oh. happens quite often in our market that, you know, you have to have those relationships with the other businesses in town. I think that's super important and a good point for anybody to, uh, that's true. to understand. You really, honestly, like your competition is more of your, your allies than, than you think they are at the end of the day. But uh, I think we were able to move them. And at, at the end of it, everybody, everybody was happy. It all ended up okay. Most people were more laughing than they were crying. So good. Was, more laughing okay. than crying but is good. It's, you know, I, I never, you know, in, in that role and, and probably similar in this role, I'm not dealing directly with guests and homeowners that often, but I will say, you know, I, I always, I hear the stories and I have so much respect for both the reservation team and the property manager, GM's frontline team that do, you know, service the guests, because like I said, there's so many situations that they're one-off situations that not one is the same. And I, on, on one hand, I, I know when I went to, um, Costco University back in December, went down there for two weeks. And that might, be, might've been why somebody said it looked like I was traveling the world. So I was down there for ah. actually three weeks. Um, but when I was there just meeting with, you know, the, the frontline team at Costco and the properties we manage. And, you know, they said, they're like, every, every situation is different. Every story is different. But the sentiment I got from all of them was that's why they actually really love this business because you're never bored. I mean, there's mm. always something new. And when you are able to help people, I think that's where, that may, that's at the heart of hospitality and the heart of what, what we do for sure. It, a lot of people feel very good when they help other people. And that's, that's a great thing. And in this case, you know, it was chaos for a moment there, but we were able to help both families and both families obviously ended up being now long-term guests of the company. So Lovely. you have to uh, sometimes be creative and just stay yeah. calm in the moment <laughs> because your guests aren't going to be calm, but oh, that's yeah, true. it's, Wild, wild times and vacation rentals. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Speaking of help, if someone wants help with marketing, um, can they reach out to you by email? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My email is just alex, A-L-E-X at casago.com. There you go, guys. Well, alex, I'm really grateful for your time and uh, all your tips on marketing, direct, direct marketing, branding. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And I, I think you, you're doing a great job with the show and wish you oh, the best of luck. You. you have some great guests and it was an honor to be one of them. <laughs> I do have a lot of great guests, including you. And I am very grateful that people are willing to help others. And that's, that's yeah. what, uh, that's a lot of what our hospitality is about. Absolutely. Um, thanks again.
This episode of How We Grow was brought to you by Blue Tent Marketing. To find out more about how Blue Tent Marketing can help grow your vacation rental business, visit bluetent.com. Make sure to search for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found, and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening.